Hello Year 8, uh, this is your Week 5 Chemistry work and it is based on a chapter in your textbook which is section 10.1 around about page 88 and it's called Types of Chemical Reaction. Now the good news is that we did have time because we were working ahead we did have time to touch upon some of these topics just very briefly in one of the last lessons before we had our distance learning commence. So some of this is a little bit familiar, but what I'm going to go through is what your learning objectives are. Your Hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to recall examples of common chemical reactions in chemistry. Recall examples of word and chemical formulae. Recall general formulae, formulae for combustion. And also how combustion can be classified as complete and incomplete combustion. So you are watching this video at the moment uh, on how to complete all of the tasks set. Now it's really important that you have section 10.1 open in your book. Now this will be the pages that you will need. The pages are featured on my YouTube channel in the next slide. Now this is the next slide. What I've basically been through is this. Your first activity is to watch the video. So once you watch the video, watch it with a parent there as well. It's quite a lengthy video. It's about 20 minutes long, so I'm going to keep this video fairly short because all of the guidance is in that video over there. Have pages 88 to 89 in your textbook, Science Progress 2 ready. And then at the end of the video, towards the end of the video, there's a moment where you need to pause the video. So at that moment, uh, it's just around about 17 minutes and 35 seconds into the YouTube video. What I would like you to do is I would like you to pause the video and then go through it with parents. Talk about the answers that you feel should be used to respond to the uh, questions. And then after that, uh, continue the video and pretty much self-assess, go through the answers that you discussed with parents and see whether you were right or not. You don't have to write the answers down. You do not have to uh, make notes because everything is in your textbook. So I want to make sure that you use your time uh, effectively and we keep things short. This lesson is really supposed to be around, around about Seven, uh, 30 minutes worth of work. So once you've uh, been through the video, the second task that I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go through this link, which is called what is combustion. When you talk about uh, combustion, you talk about the scientific word for burning. When you click on the link, you'll find this website. It's on the BBC Bite Size website. So in combustion reactions, a, combustion, a substance reacts with oxygen from the air and transfers energy to the surroundings and light and heat. And the products of a combustion reaction are called oxides. Now, unfortunately, you are not able to watch the case study video on how combustion works. But we in the UAE, we're very familiar with gas being delivered to us on a daily basis. That gas that we find in our kitchens has a chemical called methane. Methane is, um, is, is a fuel. It contains one oxygen. Each molecule contains one, uh, sorry. Each molecule contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms, and they react with oxygen. When they react with oxygen, they form carbon dioxide and water vapor when there's plenty of oxygen available. If there isn't plenty of oxygen available, a very dangerous gas called carbon monoxide could form in a type of combustion which is called incomplete combustion. This is why it's really, really important for you to make sure that whenever you're cooking with your gas in your kitchen, that you have a good supply of air coming into the kitchen. Perhaps if you're cooking, you might think, well, we want to try and close the kitchen door, not allow our fumes and cooking smells to spread throughout the apartments. But it's very, very important for you to make sure that you actually, especially during lockdown, when you're cooking, make sure that you are cooking with plenty of air. Do not cook 
in a restricted environment where air cannot come in <clears throat> and the products cannot escape because otherwise what happens is you use up all of the oxygen and when there is a low amount of oxygen you could be forming a very toxic chemical called carbon monoxide. You won't be able to smell the carbon monoxide, it's very toxic. You'll just start to feel very sleepy and it could be quite dangerous as well. So spread the message to whoever is doing any cooking at home. Make sure that you stay safe and stay well at home as well. How is combustion useful? This little animation over here is actually a really good animation for you to watch. Play the video and pause it. You can actually see exactly how I visualize chemical reactions taking place with molecules. There is a practice activity at the bottom. I'd like you to complete that. It's very simple. All you need to do is just match the formulae to the molecules that are in the animation. Okay, the next step that I would like you to take is I'd like you to complete the extension activity. So the extension activity, for those people who are finding this very, very easy and straightforward and who have time, is to watch this very quick video. It's roughly around three minutes and it talks to you about incomplete combustion. Now, there is one question which is optional in the quiz. You don't have to do it if you have not watched the extension video. You will not be penalized on that, but if you have watched the extension video, I will mark that. Finally, what you need to do is you need to complete the online quiz. The link to the online quiz is there. When you do the online quiz, it's going to be very important for you to make sure that you fill the online quiz very correctly. First of all, put the form in, type your name in. Now, I've put a very, very firm reminder about the importance of making sure that you type all of these answers that you do for these, this quiz in capital letters. Don't put any spaces before you put your words. The computer will self-mark it, but if you put any spaces or if you have any spelling mistakes, your answer will not get the mark. So spelling is really important. There are no second chances. So take on the responsibility, make sure that you have no spelling mistakes and go through the quiz and go through the questions that are in the quiz. OK, so once you've done that, that should take you through to the end of the lesson. You should be able to recall examples of common chemical reactions in chemistry, word and chemical formulae through the video that I've shown you. Recall general formula for combustion and classify combustion as complete and incomplete combustion. If you liked the video that I produced for you to guide you through the types of chemical reaction. Please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel to get sneak peeks of work for the week ahead, just in case you have time to visit the videos ahead of the week. So you can stay ahead of the learning. Share your answers with your parents. Best of luck with the quiz, and I look forward to receiving your answers very shortly. If you do have any questions, go through the slides first. If you are asking questions, please make sure that you ask the questions at a reasonable hour. I am noticing quite a few students are on the classrooms at quite late hours. I am starting to get a little bit concerned about this. It is really important to get lots of sleep. Your mind needs sleep in order for you to fulfill your potential when you do the quizzes. Stay to a routine. Stick to a routine of getting up fairly early on the weekend days. Don't treat the weekend as if it's a holiday. I am finding that there are a few pieces of work that are being submitted 
well into the late hours of the night and the early hours of the morning. I only share my concern because I just want the best from you. So please make sure that you exercise patience and good organizational skills, stay organized, stay refreshed, and I guarantee that you will work at a higher grade if you follow my advice. If you do have questions, please be precise with your questions. When you send me a, a DM, there is no need to ask me whether a quiz has come in or not. Please think about the question before you send a question. Is it something that you could easily find the answer to yourself by looking at the guidance? But if you do have a genuine problem or if something doesn't seem to be opening or working, ask but ask at a reasonable hour. If it's past seven o'clock at night time, you have to remember that all your teachers deserve rest so that they can mark and they can plan. And also your teachers' families deserve rest and time with them. Good luck with the quiz. I really look forward to seeing whether this week's work is successful and something that you enjoy for anyone that is having their birthday this week happy birthday and i hope that your combustion experiment with birthday candles is a happy event take care stay at home stay safe bye for now